Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are checking out DLSS in Red Dead Redemption 2. So this was announced back as part of NVIDIA's Computex 2021 keynote, and I know it's something a lot of you guys have been quite excited for, as it's really not easy to get a high frame rate in Red Dead 2. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the image quality you can expect from DLSS in this game, as well as the performance uplift on offer. As a quick note, DLSS is version 2.2.10.0 for Red Dead 2, and of course all of our testing today was done on our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built around the Intel i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1GHz on all cores, and that's paired with the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard with 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory clocked at 3600MHz. We also made sure to use NVIDIA's latest driver, so that's 471.11. In-game then, DLSS is found just above the game's AA options, and as a note, DLSS does lock you out from using any other form of AA. As usual, we have quality, balance, performance, and ultra-performance modes, and for the rest of the graphic settings, we set these to ultra for our testing today. Kicking off with the image quality analysis then, I'll start by saying DLSS version 2 has established somewhat of a standard in terms of the overall image quality we have come to expect from the technology. And speaking generally, I think the implementation in Red Dead 2 does live up to that. There are definitely some caveats though which we will get to shortly, but just in terms of the overall sharpness and clarity, DLSS quality mode looks good up against 4K native resolution in this scene. If we do stop and zoom in, the overall sharpness is lessened when using DLSS, which is especially noticeable if you're looking at the trees in the background, but I'm not really sure you'd notice otherwise when actually playing the game. First impressions are definitely positive though, but there are some issues I noticed over my couple of days of testing. The first is that the image quality drops off faster than you'd expect at lower resolutions, with a fair bit of noise proving evident, even with DLSS quality mode. It's actually not too bad in terms of sharpness, though it is below native, but it's the shimmering which is most noticeable to my eye. That sort of thing is to be expected as there's only so much you can do with a limited below 1080p internal resolution, but even DLSS quality mode at 4K has its issues. Primarily, I was just noticing a fair bit of flicker going on, like on the train track sleepers here. You can see the edges look very aliased and unsmooth, which I do find a bit distracting. This is actually still present at native resolution, but DLSS makes it much more obvious. Likewise, in this other scene, watch around the edges of this tree. The whole outline seems to shimmer and flicker as the camera is moving, and this is actually something I noticed quite by accident when just looking around in the game. I'm not really sure why it's happening and it didn't affect every single tree in the game thankfully, but it is still quite annoying. It seems to most affect fine lines or edges, with aliasing and shimmering appearing on these power lines for instance. The lines themselves just break up and come back together which doesn't happen at native resolution. Likewise, the same sort of thing is happening on this church spire in Saint Denis. I've slowed it down so you can see it more clearly, but it is another example of some instability introduced by DLSS that I noticed over my testing. Generally, I think things are looking very good when you're only looking at a still image, but once we introduce motion by just running around or walking about actually playing the game, you do start to notice these issues. And again, this is DLSS quality mode at 4K, which you'd expect to be a best case scenario. Those issues get amplified by using other DLSS modes too, with balance and performance modes looking even more aliased than the quality mode, as you can see here by looking at Arthur's hair. There's more noticeable instability in the areas where we were noticing it before. Based on that, I definitely recommend using the quality mode wherever possible. Yeah. Yeah. I am. King. 
A key part as to whether or not you can live with that shimmering though, is of course going to come down to how much performance is on offer from using DLSS over native resolution. To find out, we benchmarked a range of different RTX graphics cards using the DLSS quality mode at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. All of our benchmark data comes from using the built-in benchmark where we take a one minute portion of the final section of the bench as you can see here. Kicking off with the 1080p data then, it is labeled on the chart, but just for clarity, the yellow bar is the average frame rate at native resolution, and the red bar is the average frame rate with DLSS quality mode enabled. Clearly then, there really aren't big gains to be had, with DLSS quality mode typically gaining us an extra 9% or so performance, and that was consistent over the Turing and Ampere GPUs. The 3060 Ti, for instance, only gains an extra 6 frames per second, while the 2060 Super goes from averaging 55 FPS up to 60 FPS, so we're really not looking at big gains at all. Likewise, at 1440p, the improvement from DLSS is not massive. The gains are a bit bigger here, with improvements around the 13-14% to mark for the lower half of our chart, but even so, the likes of the RTX 3080 and 3090 are still only seeing single digit performance increases. So far I have to say the results here are pretty underwhelming and we're really not getting a transformative uplift to the frame rates. Moving up to 4K though, and here we do finally start to see some bigger improvements. Take the RTX 2080 Ti for instance, which gains an extra 24% to its frame rate, while back with the RTX 3080 and 3090, both of those GPUs are getting a 20% boost, so that's certainly not nothing. In terms of raw frame rate though, moving away from percentages, at most we saw a 14 FPS boost, which I do think you would notice, but in a game like Red Dead 2, it's not a massive change. To further illustrate the relatively limited gains provided by DLSS quality mode in Red Dead 2, here we've compared three other games that use DLSS version 2, all tested using DLSS quality mode on the RTX 3070. The percentage you are seeing here on this chart is the relative uplift DLSS can offer versus native resolution, with Red Dead 2 clearly at the bottom of the pile. In Cyberpunk 2077 for instance, DLSS quality provides a 71% improvement to frame rate and that's without any ray tracing. Even in Death Stranding, we're still looking at a nearly 40% performance uplift from DLSS quality mode. Finally, we did also test performance of all of the different DLSS modes, this time with an RTX 3060 Ti at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. As we'd expect, frame rates do get higher as we step down through the different quality modes, but there's still not a ton of difference between DLSS quality mode and DLSS performance for instance. At 1440p, we can see just a 10% margin between those two modes, and while that does widen up at 4K, whether or not you're going to want to use these other modes really is going to depend on how much image quality you are prepared to give up. In my view, even the performance mode doesn't give a massive boost over native resolution. So that really is going to do it for our look at DLSS in Red Dead Redemption 2. I have to admit, against the high standard set by DLSS 2.0 and its subsequent versions, I really don't think the implementation is as successful here. By and large, image quality is great if you're just looking at a still image, with very good overall sharpness and clarity when compared to native resolution if you're using the DLSS quality mode. However, as we found out, when you start moving around and actually playing the game, we did see some noticeable image instability and artifacting, with object edges and fine lines often shimmering and breaking up. With that said, I still think the game would be playable and enjoyable using the DLSS quality mode, but I think the double whammy is we're not really getting that much of a performance increase to go along with that level of image quality. An extra 20 to 25% FPS at 4K is definitely nice to have, but it's nowhere near the sort of frame rate boost we're used to seeing from other DLSS titles. 
With that then guys, I'm going to wrap up this video. So if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up and as always, leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell. And why not come chat with us in our Discord server, which is linked in the description below. While you're there, you can also check out our merch store and even consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic Forkit Guru and I'll see you in the next video.